friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. Today, I will teach you how to make a music player app in MIT App Inventor in which we can load songs from our device into our app, make a playlist and play, pause, stop, go to previous song, next song, just like any professional music player app. Let's have a look at the demo. So we can add music by pressing the add music button, play the song, go to next song, Go to previous song. Pause it. Resume it. And we can even delete the songs from our list view by tapping on it. The list view contains the names of the songs. For getting this song name from the chosen music file, we need an extension. So let's download the extension from this link. You need to sign up to Cordula Community for downloading the extension. And sign up and login is pretty easy because you can sign up using your Google account. And then just go down. And where it says this com.sunny.filetools.aix under the downloads heading, just click on it and it will be downloaded. Okay. And I also got these very nice music player images from FreePick. So I will give all these links in the video description. And I edited these images in Illustrator and made them 66 by 66 pixels each. Okay. So open up MIT App Inventor and go to project, start a new project and let's call it music player app. Okay. And first we need to import the extension that we downloaded. So just go down and click on extension and then click on import extension and choose the AIX file that you downloaded before. So this one. And just click import and it has been downloaded. So just drag and drop it here. And now we have to upload the media and we can upload it at the same time by selecting them and then dragging and dropping them here. And I also made this add music button using the same theme as my player buttons. For screen one, Make align horizontal center, align vertical center and make the background color black. Drag and drop from media a file picker onto your viewer and in the properties of the file picker make the height 45 pixels and the width 140 pixels. I'm using this size because this is the size of my uploaded image for this button. Choose the appropriate uploaded image and remove the text from it. Now from user interface, drag and drop a list view below this button. Make the width fill parent and the height 20%. Now from layout, drag and drop a horizontal arrangement below this list view and make a line horizontal center, a line vertical center and make its width fill parent. Now from user interface, drag and drop a button into this horizontal arrangement, rename it to 
previous button. Okay. And make the height and width both 66 pixels. That is the size of our uploaded image for this button. And remove the text from it. And choose the uploaded media, which is previous.png. Okay. Now, duplicate this button by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V on the keyboard for Windows or Command C, Command V for Mac OS. Rename it to Play Pause button. We will be using the same button for playing and pausing. And we just need to change the image to play.png. Again, duplicate, rename it to stop button, choose the appropriate image. Again, duplicate it and rename it to next button and choose the appropriate image. From user interface, drag and drop a notifier. This is for showing messages to the user. And from media, drag and drop a player component so that it becomes a part of our project. Okay. Our screen design is done. So let's go to the block section. We need some global variables. So let's define them by going to variables. And the first one is music position. This is for figuring out which is the next song and which is the previous song, okay? So we are going to give it a math block of one because initially the song played should be the number one song. We need another global variable and this is for finding out whether the music has been paused or not. So this is a status variable, which is initially false. And we need two lists. Okay, so just duplicate. And this is for song names. And we give it the create empty list block and right click duplicate. And this is song URIs where they are located on your device. So when the screen is initialized, so get the screen one dot initialize block. First, we tell the file picker that it should only pick up files that are of type audio. So how can we do that? we get the set file picker.mime type. So mime type means media type and we choose audio here, okay? Next is very important that we need to ask for permission to read the storage of your device, okay? So that is also inside screen one and this is the call for permission and we choose read media audio. Okay, so these two things are important. After the user has used the file picker component to choose a song, a music file, the after picking event is triggered. So here is we need to do something after the user has chosen a music file. So what is the first thing that we should do? We should add the selection to our song URIs list. So go to lists and get the add items to list block. And what is the list? The list is the song URIs. And what is the item? It is the selection of file picker. So if I go down, there it is, file picker dot selection. And there's a URI inside it. Next is the reason why we need an extension. Here, we are going to be using our extension to find the 
file path from the URI. And once we know the file path, we can extract the song name from it. So this will make more sense once I start doing it in front of you. First, we need a local variable here. We're going to call it file path. And we are going to first use this URI to get the file path by using our extension. So if I click on the extension, I have this procedure, which is, if I go down, path from URI, and it requires a content URI. So the content URI is our file picker dot selection. Okay, but I need to do another thing before giving it to file path. This procedure, this extensions procedure, will convert the URI into a path like this. Forward slash storage slash emulated slash zero and then later on some song name dot mp3. And we are only interested in the song name. So we can split this file path wherever forward slash comes using text split block this one. So I am going to give this file path to it to split it wherever forward slash comes and I will give this to the file path. So eventually my file path is actually a list with all the different parts of the file path as its items. Okay. And as the last item in this list is the song name so we can get it by using the index equal to the size of this list. So I can duplicate this block, the add items block and change this to song names. And here I am going to use the lists select list item block and the list is the file path and tell it to get the item at the index which is equal to the length of the list which is the last item. Okay, so this will return the last item in our file path list which is the song name and it will be added to the song names list. And last but not the least, we have to show the song name to the user too and add it to our list view. So set its elements. To song names. So we are done with adding music items to our playlist and I will stop the video here and we will work on the play buttons and deletion of songs from the list view in the next video. I hope you liked this tutorial and understood it so far. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, so that you don't miss any of the great projects that I've planned for you, including the part two of this tutorial. Thank you for watching this class. Have a good day and goodbye.